Welcome to another show of your town. Stanley Mickelson, select board member, Dartmouth, Massachusetts. I have a panel of, of people that, we've, that were working with myself and uh, Chris Misho, the Board of Health, to, um, to present to town meeting in the spring a thin film plastic bag bylaw. Um, I have before us today the panel of David Tattlebaum, newly elected select board member and business owner, Jamie Jackwatt, UMass Dartmouth, Kerry Hawthorne, Buttonwood Park Zoo, Chris Michaud, Director of Board of Health, and Scott Alphonse, Greater New Bedford Regional Refuse District. Uh, so briefly, um, I think we're going to just at this point just go over a few major issues of the uh, proposals of the bylaw. Um, and um, I'd like uh, Chris to just to highlight a few and later on in the show we'll get involved in a, in a little more in depth in this uh, proposed uh, plastic bag bylaw. Sure. Thank you. So the spring town meeting of 2018 there will be a article uh, appearing before the uh, town meeting that's going to propose banning um, certain plastic bags at certain locations. Um, you know, many of us know these bags. Uh, we get them at a lot of our retailers. This is one of them here. Um, they're thin film bags. Um, we'll talk later in the show about um, why this bylaw is of interest to the town and um, how the bylaw will impact um, the retailers in town and the consumers as well. Um, there are a lot of um, thresholds in this um, article so that um, you know we don't impact you know really small businesses and that um, you know that there are other bags that are allowed. So um, what uh, Mr. Misho is talking about, um, I'll just go over a few highlights of, of, of the proposed. Uh, it's actually, um, it's a general bylaw uh, in the Article 76, which is what will be before town meeting. So it is a general bylaw. Um, only applies to retailers with gross building floor area of 5,000 square feet that provide plastic bags with thickness of less than one mil obviously does not apply to the stores that are less than 5,000. Um, it only applies uh, to the bagging of proposed uh, purchases on merchandise. Um, some of the bags that will not be affected, like sandwich bags, large trash bags, liners, large trash liners, uh, that won't be affected. But it will, but it does apply to bags provided at any retailer for bulk or specialty items like meat, seafood, produce, bake, bakery products, flowers, potting plants, newspapers, magazines, and other periodics. So um, it's, it's a wide variety. Uh, we do understand that, um, and we'll talk about it later, that the, the biggest impact is as what most people will see at any supermarket at the end of the checkout, those particular bags. And those are the bags that we see everywhere, on the side of our roads, in our trees, in our waterways, everywhere, destroying the environment. And, and, um, and I think everyone uh, that's listening to this program, watching this program today, understands the impact of what these, bag, these specific bags do to our town and our country and our, the world. So, uh, Kerry, I, I'd like you to pick up on that, if you don't mind, and, and as, uh, again, uh, representing the, the new uh, Buttonwood Park Zoo. Sure. Thank you. Sure, yeah. So at the zoo, we are really focused on environmental impacts, especially as it relates to our wildlife here um, in New England and around the world. And plastic bags are a huge impact, um, especially to our ocean animals. Um, over 100 
thousand marine animals die every year from ingesting these plastics. Uh, I think the latest number is somewhere around 44 percent of seabirds at some point in time have ingested plastic. Um, a lot of people don't realize the wildlife we have right off our own coasts, like sea turtles and seals and the fish uh, through our fishing industry. Um, these plastic bags, they never go away. They take millions of years and when they do degrade, they just degrade into smaller and smaller pieces and the wildlife ingest those small pieces and it ends up in their systems, which can in turn end up in us when we eat that um, fish that has been, you know, gorging on plastic. So it's definitely out there. Um, it's a problem. And um, between entanglement and ingestion, it's, it's big for everything from fish to birds to mammals um, and everyone in between. Thank you. Um, Mr. Alphonse, um, how, how does it affect uh, our refuse? So the Greater New Bedford Regional Refuse District operates Crapo Hill Landfill, which is the solid waste disposal facility for the town of Dartmouth. Um, anytime we can remove anything from the waste stream, it's a, it's a benefit to the town. It helps us preserve our landfill capacity for future generations and reduce costs. Um, from an operational standpoint, the bags do generate a, a certain nuisance at the landfill. They are lightweight, as Chris demonstrated. They uh, become airborne when they're disposed of at the landfill. They get tangled in trees and as Carrie mentioned, they are also a threat to wildlife at the landfill. We've seen bird entanglements on certain occasions. So anytime we, we can get these bags out of the waste stream, it's going to benefit the operation as well too. Um, there is a cost associated with, redu with uh, removing litter that becomes windblown at the landfill and um, removing that litter does also present certain risks to personnel. These bags are often in uh, treetops require man lifts, they have to get to certain heights to remove them from the trees. So we would, would like to see uh, these reduced from the waste stream. <clears throat> By all means, for sure, <laughs> save all of us a little, little bit of pr uh, issues that... Uh, so Jamie, um, maybe you can um, add a little uh, uh, something to this discussion uh, uh, representing the, the college you UMass Dartmouth and, and what you can help us do as a town working hand in hand with the university, which, um, which is very important for us to do that. So again, as, as another sort of mini community within the larger community, we realize that our students um, do a lot of shopping within the area. Um, but we also know that our students, um, like most of us, um, have access to these uh, reusable bags. Um, the thin film bags that we're talking about are really designed for just one time use only. And we know that about 99% of those end up not getting recycled. Um, they end up just getting thrown away. Um, I know some people try to reuse them, whether it's trying to do it for cat litter or you're picking them after their dogs. Um, but that's a really small percentage of the overall bags um, that get used. And students are a part of that. Um, so we're trying to make sure that our students have access to reusable bags. Um, I think all of us have them in the trunk of our car and our front closets. Um, and that's an important part of um, changing those behaviors, that we already have the tools at our disposal. We just need to be able to utilize those a little bit more. Yes. So, um, Mr. Tatelbaum, uh maybe you can bring us up to speed in what you're doing at, at your, uh, your uh, business at Big Value. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Um, I know you and Chris have uh, led the charge in getting this thing going, and uh, I've, we... Um, as a small retailer, family-owned here in town, uh, it's, a, it's really, uh, we think it's important for us to participate. Uh, we um, we want to offer the transition to, uh, to our customers uh, to make it easy and simple, but and end up where they're reusing bags. Um, we're going to put together a program. We're going to have a jump-off period starting um, on, on um, uh, Earth Day, the weekend of April 21, 22. It's a trial basis. We're going to make cardboard boxes available that people can use uh, going forward from there uh, as opposed to bags. Uh, we have our own uh, bags, everybody has them, but we even have these reusable bags. Um, and we're making them available for sale, but we're also gonna uh, start having promotions where you buy X amount of stuff and we give, <coughs> give it to you for free because uh, we've done it a couple of times and people are really interested in it. Uh, we wanna try to uh, build up a um, a protocol for making this thing work and the transition involving the zoo and the kids at the zoo and, uh, and in the university so that uh, we can then go forward and offer other retailers in town some of the successes we've had so that help make their transition um, even easier. Uh, the end result is that uh, we're going to get rid of these bags and um, 
we make it uh, a community-wide thing where it feels good to do it as opposed to just mandating it. Uh, we're better than that. The town of Dartmouth is better than that. We don't need just a mandate. I think it's important to make people feel like they're contributing to the total package, and we're happy to be a part of that uh, yeah. program. And I think we'll buy into it. I um, do, too. Uh, I truly, I think everyone, uh, I, I can't see anyone that could, could say no to this proposed uh, uh, restriction. Uh, it, makes no, it makes no sense to me. I was at a home show in Rhode Island, the Civic Center, and uh, over the weekend we had a large home show, and there were tens of thousands of people. One of the, one of the most, I, I would say, in the, all the years I've been doing this, uh, probably the best year we've ever had. Uh, I think the weather helped and all that, but um, but talking about companies that are that are buying into this program, so they're in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, the Civic Center, obviously. Uh, I think we've all seen these if you go to this this store. They had to, without an exaggeration, had to have at least ten thousand of these bags for free to hand out to their uh, customers or. To, Prospective customers, but more importantly, to the people that live in Providence, Rhode Island, and they 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 bought into this program, obviously, and and I think the the, su the few supermarkets that start, that are in town and one that's on the border uh, will buy into this program also. They're the same company, and there's another company, another uh, larger supermarket. They're well prepared, well prepared to 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 transition from plastic to this. They've done it in 65 plus other cities and towns in the state of Massachusetts. So uh, this is not a hard sell to the larger stores, uh, even the, the big boxes, uh, not a hard sell to them either. Uh, the selling point will be to the smaller stores. Uh, if you're under 5,000 square feet, that won't be part of it. You will not be involved in it. But there will be a few uh, of independents that are larger, like yourself, and thank you for what you're doing in advance. And um, Dave and I have been friends for a long time, and I hadn't talked to Dave about this plastic bag issue until um, Chris and I were just had a few meetings, and uh, we, this, we finally got this thing off the ground. We, uh, we have a committee, uh, and that's when you told me, and I was uh, really, I was very surprised and, and pleasantly surprised. And there'll be more and more Dave Tattlebombs and big values that will do the same thing in this town. There's no question about it. Stanley, I think yes. one of the things important for our smaller retailers and, and sort of mom and pop shops in here in town that this may be affecting those stores over 5,000 square feet is that all of them are paying for their plastic bags right now. You know, they're paying in the order of two or three cents per bag that goes out. And so for those retailers to not be giving those bags away for free, it's actually going to be a benefit to them financially. That's why they did it. Correct. So having those reusable bags yep. or just not having bags available that are on paper um, reduces their expenses as well as being good for the environment. Um, and again, I think um, the, you know, the point we had drawn earlier that so many people already have these reusable bags as a part of their sort of um, toolkit sure. um, existing already. We just need to get into a better practice of I need to bring it into the mall with me. I need to bring it into that right. store each time. Right. I need to make sure I get it from the hall closet into the vehicle. Um, you know, so that I can bring it with me to the store. We're all creatures of habit, exactly. Um, truthfully, and uh, it takes very little time to, to fall into that category. Individually, um, as a consumer, I find the plastic bags to be a nuisance, and we converted over to the canvas bags a long time ago because you put them in the back of the car or the SUV or the truck or whatever, and you go around one bend, and next thing you know, if there's anything round in there, it's rolling all over the place, and then you have to rebag your groceries you know, when you get home. And then the plastic bag falls off, f flies and, away off the back of your and truck. And they're so small now and so thin film, they don't yeah. carry anything, so you right. end up with far more bags than you need. Um, and you can reduce the amount of trips back and forth to your car with those larger reusable bags. Yeah. It's just a good practice. And, and, and again, creatures of habit, we are human beings. Uh, very much so. So, David? I might add that um, I know smaller retailers, um, the, purchasing these bags at, at a good price is a uh, is uh, difficult because it's a based on volume pricing. Um, uh, my own, based on my own personal experience and manufacturers who make for the larger retailers, and I think that we're going to try very hard to make these bags available at a reasonable price in some kind of generic message form that we can um, then uh, dole out to the smaller retail so they can be competitive and not have to pay a lot of money to have those bags available. Mm. So that would be a nice transition for them as well. 
yeah. going to uh, work out the mechanics for that, but I yeah. think it's uh, easy enough to do. With the help of some local businesses, I'd right. like to see um, also maybe they could contribute some some cash to have some bags made uh, with the Dartmouth logo on it, uh, and we could hand them out to uh, various locations at Town Hall and blood similar places to, to be picked up at no charge. Exactly. So I'm looking to any large business owner or a small business owner or even a resident that would like to contribute to this program to make our lives and your children and grandchildren's lives mm -hmm. safer health-wise. So you know where to get a hold of me. There's another, <laughs> um, to, to carry on to what Scott was mentioning about the solid waste impacts, um, in Massachusetts with these plastic bags. Um, Massachusetts, a number of years ago, they, they've been trying to preserve solid waste capacity in the state, the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, so they create waistbands. Uh, one of the first uh, waistbands I believe that they created was on the white goods, um, which is your uh, refrigerators, your washing machines, uh, very easily recyclable. Um, more recently, they instituted an organics ban, and in the organics ban, one of the first um, organics that they banned from uh, solid waste disposal was leaf and yard waste. The leaf and yard waste gets diverted to compost sites and um, unfortunately the, um, the compost sites are not just receiving organic material, infusing that organic material oftentimes are these plastic bags. Mm -hmm. When people are raking up their lawns in urban areas, um, the bags are coming, they're not getting segregated out, they're getting mixed in with it, they go to the, they go to the compost facility the compost breaks down, and when they screen the compost, the, the bags get diverted off into a what they call a tailings pile. So now you have a pile of rocks and heavy wood and plastic, and you can't do anything with that mm -hmm. pile. Uh, so you take a small amount of bags, and when you screen that out of the compost, you end up with a tailings pile that could be, you know, depending upon the volume, but it's usually anywhere from 50 to a few hundred yards and um, you can't do anything with it. Mm. So you've created actually a larger volume of solid waste from de minimis amounts of plastic bags um, in those tailings. Stanley, Chris brings up a good point as far as uh, some of the challenges that plastic bags present to recycling programs in general. And in the town of Dartmouth, one of the biggest contaminants that we see in the curbside recycling program is plastic bags. Residents often bag their recyclables and think that they're actually doing a service when in right. fact that th those bags do create a certain nuisance for right. the recycling <clears throat> program. Um, they create problems in the sorting of the material and the plastic bags oftentimes get tangled in the machinery that's used to sort recyclables. Um, they also... And that um, means a shutdown of the machinery. Right, shut down of the machinery. Pull, out, pull all the plastic bags out or whatever's, whatever's entangled. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so that's time consuming, it costs money. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, you know, it, it does present a certain risk to workers. Everyone deserves a safe sure. workplace. Yep. Um, yep. So it, it is, it's definitely um, one of the biggest problems. The town recently received a grant valued at $40,000 from Mass Department of Environmental Protection. It's uh, called Recycling IQ. Uh, it's to improve quality. IQ stands for improved quality. And one of the targets of this program will be to remove plastic bags from the curbside program. So you know, we're hopeful that this will certainly help us um, improve the quality. Uh, it's even more important <coughs> now, um, most of our plastics are recycled overseas, uh, mostly in China. And last year, China um, instituted what they call the National Sword Initiative, which has placed strict limits on the amount of contaminants that can be in plastics that are sent overseas for recycling. So we want to make sure that the town produces a high quality recyclable material and getting plastic bags out of the recycling stream is certainly one of the steps. Right. It's just more money in the till for us. Yes. Yeah. David? Stanley, um, uh, there's no doubt that within a, some time period the state will pass this ban as well, but uh, there is no reason for us to wait. Who knows? That could be a year, two years, three years, it doesn't matter. Um, we need to do this initiative as a proud town to do the right way in, in, a, in a way that is comfortable for our uh, residents as well and offer them alternatives as opposed to just say, okay, tomorrow morning we have no plastic bags and you know, it, it, the compliance will be difficult and be uh, cumbersome. But in this case, we can roll it out with lots of uh, benefits and uh, it, with, with a lot of ease. And I think uh, we're ready for it. And 
uh, the recycling program in town has been a fantastic success. People embrace it well. Sure has. Yeah. And uh, from day one it was. Yeah. And I think we can do this uh, just as well. I, I believe that's what will happen. Yep. But we can't be so sure. No. So we really need, that's why we're having this program today. We're kicking this off. Uh, uh, we want to we wanna let everybody know how, how successful we feel it will be. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we want to make sure that if there are questions, that the questions have to be asked. Uh, and uh, they're in this general bylaw. Uh, I'd like to go over a few others. Uh, um, I'll give everybody, I'll, uh, Chris, you, I'd let you expound on a little bit more of, of the bylaw. I mean, I have it in front of you, but you probably haven't memorized. So it's, a simple, <laughs> it's really a simple bylaw because it gets into, um, you know, a few components um, and that's it. It's, if, you know, you're captured by it or not, 5,000 square feet. So that's the targets, the Walmarts, the Walgreens. Um, it's not your really small. Um, what size is 5,000 square feet, would you say? 50 by 100. Just, it's, it's and it doesn't include well, out, it does example, not. example, I think that's yeah, what you're example, looking for. I mean, um, um, the Cumberland Farms on uh, Route 6. Right. Okay. It would not include a subway. Right. Um, other items that will not be included. So when you go to Shaw's and you're buying produce, those individual bags that you grab to put your peppers or your cucumbers in, right. those are excluded. Right. Um, newspapers, um, the Dark bags. Like, bags. Not included. Right. Not included. Right. Um, and then it gets into the thickness of the bag. And, you know, one thing that some people may have a hard time uh, trying to quantify or, you know, make tangible is what is a mill. A mill is a thousandth of an inch. And so that we can try to figure out what is still what is a thousandth of an inch of an inch. Uh, a credit card is 30 mils. So if you lay your credit card down and look at it, that's 30 mils. Um, home saran wrap is about the um, thickness of uh, maybe a little bit more th thicker than most thin film bags. This is about 0.35 to 0.4 mils. Uh, most of the uh, thin film bags are about 0.25 to maybe some of them are 0.4. And we've, um, in this article, it's uh, a one mil threshold. Um, that's done for uh, ease of enforcement so that we can uh, readily um, see what the thickness of the bag is without having to go to a testing lab. Um, you know, most trash bags are in the uh, greater than one mil thickness. Um, also, uh, the effective date, so if and when this and when this bylaw is passed, when um, general bylaw, uh, it will be um, one year from the date on which it was approved by the attorney general's office. So any bylaw that go, that's passed it, by our town at town meeting still has to pass uh, the scrutiny of the attorney general um, for accuracy and just in, just generally mass general law. But that would be one year, and we thought that would be fair to let, again, the larger stores are not going not gonna to take a year to do this. They'll be into this in a few months. Uh, it'll be the smaller stores that'll, that'll need that extra time. And there'll be an enforcement. Um, so uh, there will be people out there after a year uh, enforcing this bylaw, and there will be fines um, that uh, will go along with that. Initially, I'm sure there'll be warnings not going to find somebody from the get-go, but there will be. We will strictly adhere to this law, this bylaw, and for the best of everyone. So, um, um, so I would like um, some closing statements from everyone, uh, and just a little overview of what uh, what you what you feel and uh, how you feel uh, you can contribute to this uh, this cause. Jamie? Yeah, happy to start. Um, I think that Dartmouth as a green community um, is a community that says that you know, we're willing to do something extra. We're willing to go that extra mile to make a difference for our citizens and for our futures. Um, and this is the next logical step for us to be able to take. Uh, you know, these plastic bags are, are single-use items. They're largely not recycled. If they are tempted to be recycled, you know, it, it only gums up the works. Um, they end up in our waterways, um, they end up in our sewer systems and clogging things up. So they're causing lots and lots of problems. So I don't want people to be comfortable with the idea that the status quo is okay. It's not. There's lots of problems that are existing from it. And with a simple change, one that we're already, many of us are accustomed to already, 
we're going to have a small behavior change for a big impact. And I think that the community is ready for That's it. That's quite true, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Delphonse? From uh, the landfill operator's perspective, I think any time we can get a single-use item out of the landfill, uh, it's a benefit to the town. Uh, this is certainly a classic case, and let's hope that this is the beginning of a behavioral change for everyone. I think we all <laughs> yes. could stand to look at our own behavior, I, myself included, and see what we can do to help d reduce the amount of waste that gets generated in our town, and this is certainly a good step. Uh, plastic doesn't really go anywhere in the environment. It doesn't. It may break down into smaller pieces, but it doesn't degrade. And, um, and our, one of the benefits of having a landfill is that we can capture gas, which we do at Crapo Hill Landfill, and, and use that gas it's beneficially quite a system. Yeah, to, to generate electricity. Unfortunately, plastic doesn't contribute to that degradation, and in some cases it actually may hinder. So we're all for a plastic bag ban. Responsibility, I guess it's called. Yes. Mr. Tatalon. Um, when you think of it, retailers are trying to make these bags thinner, uh, less useful. So uh, what are they forced to do? Use more because it doesn't hold anything. So we've, we've shot ourselves in the foot because uh, in the interest of saving cost and being more efficient, I think we definitely use more bags because they just don't hold it. Uh, I, I think that uh, the c final comment I keep thinking about is how well this town did with recyclables from day one. It was a fantastic success and there's no reason to do it. I, and I, um, I'm happy to be part of a, a, a retail concept that can uh, build a program that works and, uh, and share it with others who are interested. So I, uh, I think it's going to be great. I'm really excited about it and positive. And uh, we just have to work hard to make sure the town meeting members are well informed with all the information they need to make an informed vote. Right. If uh, they don't, uh, then it's our responsibility because we need to let them know uh, that uh, what the details are, how it's going to work, and why we're doing it and then they can vote properly. And uh, that's, our, that's our job. Thank you. Ms. Hawthorne? So the mission of the zoo really is to make sure that we're communicating and educating our visitors about what's important, not only for wildlife, but for our future generations. And it really is our responsibility to make sure that we're making sure the landfill is not filled by the time our children and grandchildren inherit it. Um, the three R's is a really important um, message that we get across and what we're always reminding people is the one that's always most forgotten is reduce. So reduce, reuse, recycle. Recycle shouldn't be your first thing that you do. Um, really the first thing we want visitors to look at is reducing their single use items. Um, the average um, grocery bag is used for about 12 minutes and then it's just, it's done. It's done its job. We use over 12 million barrels of oil to make these things every year. And so there's just a lot of resources that go into these. Um, and so if we can get people to just look at those single use items like plastic bags and figure out how to reduce them before they end up in our landfills, in our waterways, in our recycle streams, um, the better we'll be. Um, as, a, as, a, as a society. And so we're excited to partner with the town of Dartmouth, which is already leading the way in a lot of green initiatives. And we hope that we see this happening um, across the South Coast. And we do take it serious. Yeah. We do. Mr. Michaud. So one thing that I, we didn't touch upon that I really want to um, just mention first is that um, you're not going to be walking out of the store if you don't have a reusable bag with an armload of product. Um, there's nothing to stop the retailer from providing a paper bag. Uh, so that's the first. There are some communities that did outright uh, bag, uh, bag bans, um, but this does not ban the use of paper. Um, but um, really just to kind of take off of what Scott said, um, you know, we do have uh, an interest as a society, as a community, to manage our solid waste. Um, you know, we are growing in population, yet our solid waste capacity is diminishing in Massachusetts. And you know, when we're diverting um, compostables to compost sites and creating larger volumes of solid waste out of very negligible amounts of plastic, that's concerning because that material has to go somewhere. And that's going to be back to our landfills and filling it up with plastics that shouldn't have been there. And if we can get those plastics out of the compostables, then um, we'll have more usable compost in the end. Um, it all fits into the, you know, the management of the solid waste. We, we have a solid waste issue in this state, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, for the generations ahead. Thank you very much. And well, thank you all for your participation. Hopefully uh, the 10 million people that watch this uh, DCTV will have an awful lot to talk about. So that'll do it for another 
program of your town, Stanley Mickelson, saying we'll see you next time.